November 25th, 2013. This is the SDO, or Solar Dynamics Observatory, website. I'll put a link to it, guys. You've seen a lot of my videos that have the images of the sun here. Now, what they're doing for ISON, and this is kind of unique, is they are going to off-point the cameras. They're going to do it three times during the perihelium. They're going to, and notice, and I'm going to show you this, but notice they're going to the different cameras here, the approach, then the perihelion as it wraps around, and then after that, and I'll show you in the third row, that they're going to show the, as it leaves. But see how they're going to, and they test run this on November 6th. This is what we're looking at. If you guys were watching the cameras kind of go crazy that day, they were seeing how far they could tilt it, keep everything in line. And so this is what they're going to do. Check this out. This is for perihelion. The first one you saw is the approach. And this is going to be, I mean, you're going to need your popcorn for this and maybe a hard hat. We'll see. But you got uh, this view and then, that call the perihelion. That's going to be so neat because, guys, now when we watch the sun, we only have um, a limited view either way, left or right. You Sometimes you don't even see the complete CME. You know, the image is cut off because of the width of the sun. And here, this is when it's leaving. This is when it's going to be coming over Earth. This is the camera view. Now, I'm not sure how long they're going to leave them there and come off the sun. But this is going to be amazing, guys. I'm talking about the whole world will be able to see this. Now, this is the latest images today of the sun. And just checking out, not much has changed. You've got the small flares. We're still getting, and you notice those river of fires in the top right. Looks just like yesterday's. And I double-checked to make sure it wasn't. But it has turned further around. We had those going on yesterday. Same things are happening on the sun. You notice the glow's a little brighter on the right side. That's where our comets are, just building that energy up. We saw yesterday that I sun was gaining strength. And I'm going to show you some images that are amazing, guys. <clears throat> this is my favorite image so far from I sun. It's not that clear, but I'm going to tell you one. It's my favorite. You can see the pieces inside the nucleus. This is yesterday, morning, just a few moments before sunrise, and Vince Victor over on uh, from Southern California mountains facing east caught this, and he didn't use a telescope. He used a camera. Now, McNaught, this is a comparison to camera shots. McNaught in 2007, ISON, I've got 2012. Excuse me, guys, it's 2013, but that's yesterday. Now, look at just look at that. Both are camera shots. I'm going to show you what McNaught did as it came around the sun. And it did not, it was not a sun diver. It came out, it came by the sun, and we were able to see it on the close telescopes. But it was no by, by no means a sun diver. Now, when I pull this ground image up, this was taken with a cannon, I think a 250T, he said. And it, he only had a short window. You see the sun was rising there. But here's the details on it for you camera buffs. But he's saying it's five photos stacked on a Canon, Canon Rebel T2i. Carefully snapped 400 ISO. Now, <clears throat> that's both of his images. And uh, he did a great job. But he was up early and you see that sun coming up. Now, I took that and started to try to pull and do a close-up. Because I noticed that you even on his image, the original one, you could see a fragmentation inside this. That's why I'm saying... We're able to see fragmentation from the ground guys with a cannon rebel. And you saw McNaught. Remember what they look like side by side. Now I want to go back and give you a comparison of a few of the comets that we dealt with on these cameras. Now this is the Christmas comet from two years ago, Lovejoy. We're going to have one this year too as it comes over the earth. Now they're saying this comet, remember our sizes, one half kilometer. If we, if we give them their 5K max, that would put ISON at 10 times brighter or larger than what you just saw Lovejoy do. ISON is also going to die b behind the sun. Again, SDO is going to tilt their cameras. This is not. This is LASCO. Now, this is a comet that's similar in size to Lovejoy. And you see what the electricity did, did to this. This was in 2002. 
like a fly swatter. Again, it was not a sun diver. It came more of a grazer and maybe not quite, maybe a three or 400 meter comet instead of the 500 meters love joy. But look at that, it almost knocked that thing out of sight. Now here's two diving in that were smaller than Lovejoy. These may have been uh, 100 meters, 200 meters twins. And the reason I'm showing you this, you see the electrical shock wave, bam, there. Not only that, I think iSun may be in multiple pieces with different days of perihelium since the 19th. Now this is C3, this one probably about the size of iSun. What you'll find out if you go and start checking all these comets and get find the size of a nucleus, guys, you're not going to find it. They they don't have an exact formula for figuring it. They give you estimates. Here's Bradfield. That's about like Lovejoy. Again, not a sun diver, grazer. You can see the pulse there. Here's the scary one. This is a monster, guys, McNaught, 2007. It said that it's a solar body. It was situated 135 to 150 million kilometers from Earth at its closest approach. ISON will be 40 million, okay? They estimated the head is about 10 to 20 kilometers. And uh, in my last video on a guesstimate of a size, I said 20K, and they're saying that's bigger than Everest. The inner comma surrounding the head was four times larger than Earth. This is McNaught. This is what it looked like from Australia, guys. We couldn't see it in the Northern Hemisphere. Look at that fan. And they said the space probes that go through the comet tail, some of them, it takes them 30 minutes. The largest one before this, it took two and a half days for the instrument to pass through the tail and send back readings. McNaught, it took 18 days. But guys, it's a heads up. We're going to do the updates on it. I'm going to put a link to uh, the SDO website, and that's going to be live almost live coverage of the perihelion. Be safe.